I'm going to review some types of chemical equilibrium calculations with you so that when you get into your acid base you'll feel more comfortable on how to approach those. So these are the few types of chemical equilibrium calculations that we have dealt with so far. First type would be where you have been given all equilibrium concentrations except for one. It's extremely helpful for you to write the K expression and even to write ice. If you recognize that at this point you've got 0.003 molar nitrogen and 0.042 molar hydrogen and you put them into the expression, you see that K, which is defined at equilibrium, you have everything you need except for the ammonia. So even though you don't need ice, the ice helped you to figure out what you needed and what you had. At this point then you're simply going to plug these values in and solve for the ammonia which would be like solving for x squared. When you get the NH3 concentration, okay, then you can plug it in and go back and see if your K value comes close with an experimental uh, values and that can help you see that you did the problem correctly. The next type of problem is when you have been given what looks like an ice problem. They don't give you any initial concentrations. They give you an equilibrium concentration and they ask you to find the others. Well if you go ahead and write the equilibrium expression, okay, and you say to yourself, all right, I don't know those, but I can write the expression. I can then go ahead and put the information I have in, so 0 0.25 molar squared, and then I stop and think. These are in a one-to-one -one ratio, and I had no initial concentration, so at equilibrium these will be equivalent to each other. So I'm simply solving for x squared, this time on the bottom, and it's just a simple algebra problem. The next level of problem is when you are given initial concentrations and an equilibrium amount of one of them. You can see that you went from 3 to 3.5, so you gained 0.5 molar here. Stoichiometrically, that means you lost 0.5 molar here, and you lost half that amount, 0.25 molar here. Again, you simply go in and define your equilibrium by subtracting the 0.5 and subtracting the uh, 0.25 and you put those values in. You have now determined your equilibrium concentrations and you can put them into the K expression and solve for K. This is one of the more straightforward types of problems and one of the most very common problems that you will see where you've already been given an equilibrium concentration and you're simply solving for the remaining. But if you're not given an equilibrium concentration, then you're going to have to solve with algebra. And what you hope is that you have a perfect square problem, which simply makes it easier to solve algebraically. So here's a typical equilibrium problem. You're given a K value. You're given initial concentrations of some of the reactants or products. In this case, you can see that your reaction would have to shift to the right in order to create some product. If you have all reactants and products, you'll have to solve for Q to determine which way the reaction will shift. But in this case, you're going to shift to the right. You'll always shift to wherever there is a zero amount. So in shifting to the right, you're going to lose stoichiometrically X for H2 and X for I2, and you're going to gain your stoichiometric 2x here. You now have 1 minus x, 1 minus x, and 2x. If you go into the equilibrium expression, you've got 2x squared over your 1 minus x, and that would be squared. Now you have to solve for x. 
So if you recognize that you can take the square root of each of these sides, then the algebra will be quite simple. You're going to have 2x squared over 1 minus x equals the square root of k. When you finally get all your terms reduced down to x, you go back to your equilibrium expression and you have defined the equilibrium of h2 and i2 is 1 minus x, so you'll subtract that x value and for your hi, you will double it. If you're not given an equilibrium concentration and you don't have a perfect square, you're not going to have any problems because the only type of problem they're going to give you are problems with small k values. This means k values less than 1 times 10 to the negative 2. When you have a small k value like that, you're going to be able to make some assumptions. So first, let's look at this problem. We've got a nice small k. Our reaction is going to shift to the right to make some NO, so our change is going to be minus 2x plus 2x plus x. So 1.5 minus 2x, 2x, and x. If we go into our equilibrium expression and write our terms, 1.5 minus 2x squared, we now can do some simplification. Any x's that are added or subtracted to numbers can be removed. That's based on the idea that the change to reach equilibrium is going to be small. Since k is small, that means we're not going to shift forward to a very large degree. So our change will be so small that any x's that are added or subtracted to numbers can be removed. So that then gives us x times 2x squared. So that's going to be 4x cubed over 1.5. You still have to square it is equal to that k value. Once you get that x, remember you still have to go back and define those equilibrium values. 1 minus 5 minus 2x, so you would 1 minus 5 minus, double your x value, 2x for NO, and Cl2 would simply be x. You then have to prove the validity by making sure that you're not in more than 5% error, so your assumption of leaving out x was valid. But when your k is this small and your values are this high in concentration, you're not really ever going to have a problem. Again, if we look at a problem like this and trying to determine what to do with those x values, we can see that our k value is nice and small. We are going to shift to the right. So this is an acid-base problem. We're going to leave out our liquid water. Okay, So we don't need to put anything in there. The k is just a regular k. The reaction does not go far forward. You can see how small it is. So we would lose x here and gain x is here, leaving us with 0 0.1 minus x and xx. So it would be x squared over 0 0.1 minus x equals our k value. We would leave this x out, so it's going to simplify to x squared over 0 0.1 equals Ka. And this is very easy and simple to solve for. When we finally find our x, we'll go back in and find our acid equilibrium and our hydrogen ion and fluoride ion concentrations, and we're done. This is very typical of weak acid problems. Um, the stoichiometry is always going to be a one-to-one -one ratio, so these are going to be easy and straightforward to use. So hopefully this gets you through the basic types of equilibrium problems so you can get them straight in your mind and move on to the more advanced problems, although they don't get much more difficult.